Live your life, boy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Conspiracy Farm, where we don't start the conspiracies, we just add the water. And now, your host of the most state-of-the-art, most informed podcast on the interweb, I present to you, Pat Militage and Jeffrey Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for war? Yeah, rear naked choke of Cocker Spaniel, bro. You don't yeah, change, change the neighborhood up. Conspiracy Farm, go. Check it out. What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Jeffrey Wilson coming at you one more again for another episode of The Conspiracy Farm on this fine day, 28th of May, the year of our Lord, 2020. Of course, as always, riding shotgun with me is UFC Hall of Famer Patrick J. Militich. How are we doing today, champion? That's French for you know, I'm champion. Doing, I'm, do, I'm, doing, I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. It's been a very busy day for me. I've been staying, uh, oh, wow. I'm just buried, dude. So I'm, I'm happy. You busy. Know, as long as I stay busy. Yeah. You know, busy is a good thing to be. I don't mind. It's the devil's playground, right? Yeah. You don't want Militich with <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> and, you know, as always, well, actually not as always, as recently uh, has come down the pike, we are now on Dish TV, the Dish Network. We got a storm rolling in, a little thunder in the background. Uh, if you go to Dish Communities, and search for The Conspiracy Farm. You should find our pretty mugs right there. And another pretty mug joining us today, returning to the show. So anxious to talk to him. He is State Senator Neil Anderson. Neil, what's going on, brother? Hey, good to be with you guys again. Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, looking stormy up this way, too. Yeah, so please pardon any uh, any glitches we might have. We'll, we'll, we will power through this. But, uh, Senator, I mean, you've obviously, as you know, most legislators have over the last several months, have had your hands full. You got, um, you know, I don't want to put it put you on blast, but the governor's kind of seem like he's smoking some of that dope they just legalized up there. But um, what's going on in the state of Illinois that you could talk to us about? Well, before we start, I, I have to ask, do you want me to wear a mask? Yeah. I don't want to give the computer any viruses or anything like that. I love it. That's See? what that's what that's what, that, what, what, what what's the antivirus box we all are supposed to have on. Yeah. The, the N95 masks? No, no. I'm talking about the, 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 the virus, the antivirus for your computer, the box that it came in. You put oh, that yeah. over your face. <laughs> I gotcha. gotcha. That's I hilarious. That a long time ago. I wish I would have talked to you guys before. Yeah, and so, not making light. Not, we, we never make light. No. We're not making light of the fact that because people have actually lost loved ones. And we just had no, a guest absolutely. on yesterday. We just had a, a guest on yesterday, uh, Attilus Jim, um, Frank, and and uh, Ian out there that – you know, they, the governor of New Jersey has shut their gym down, shut off their water, changed the locks on their building. Sabotage their septic their system. Sab- sabotage their sewer system. It's blowing 10 feet up into their building. Um, you know, a lot of crazy stuff. He lost his mother, and she um, had been coming to the gym, working out, everything else. And then she had to go to the hospital because she had uh, tuberculitis. Diverticulitis, uh, yeah. Diverticulitis, yeah. And, uh, and she got it in the hospital. And... It ended up um, taking her life, and he had to decide whether to go see his mother for the last time or continue to fight the fight against the governor because if he would have gone to see his mother, he would have had to uh, been quarantined for 14 days, and, and he would have you know not been able to continue fighting the fight. And he said, my mother would have kicked my ass had I not just continued down the path that I'm on. And that that's something... You know, he, his, he lost his mother to this, and he's battling for his kids' freedom. Exactly. For their future freedom. That's heavy stuff, man. Yeah. yeah, I think it was Jefferson that says, I prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery, and I think that's uh, that says a lot. 100%. 100%. So, um, so uh, back to the state of Illinois, as uh, many of your viewers probably know, we just got out of session here this early, early, about 1.15 a.m. Sunday morning. Um passed one of the worst budgets I've ever seen, um, and uh, along with a couple other goodies. And, you know, this is this is the problem, and I don't care whether it's Democrat or Republican, this is the problem with one-party control, um, right. especially in su- with supermajorities, because we were faced, you know, with the whole COVID crisis and not being in session, um, and then having to come back and do a budget uh we weren't even asked to the negotiating table i mean we were literally they're just there for you know you know for for show really and uh it was a pretty much partisan roll call in both chambers and uh we are spending uh six billion dollars more than we're taking in this year 
uh, $1.4 billion in increased spending from last year um, and almost no cuts. And surprisingly, one thing that um, that kind of frustrated me is, you know, uh, in the state of Illinois, the funding for public education is so far down the hill that we're yeah. playing catch up. And which is why everybody complains about property taxes in the state of Illinois, because the state isn't funding it properly. And that leaves the local governments to have to fill in that gap. And the only um, the only way they can do that is to levy property taxes. So um, funding education um, is, you know, a, a, should be a big deal for every legislator. And the fact that they uh, increase spending in a lot of areas uh, but not education was a little frustrating for me. Um, but overall, yeah, you know, just down to to the nuts and bolts of it, when we're increasing spending $1.4 billion from last year in the middle of an economic crisis is not only um, irresponsible, it, it's downright criminal. And yes, um, yes. he's going to have to be held accountable for this, and I hope, people start paying attention and stop looking at um, how how many handouts they can get uh, before this all goes really, really south. I think it's already gone pretty south, brother. I mean, you guys are at what, 40, what was the budget passed? 40 some billion, right? Yeah, 40, 42.6 billion. Right, right. And, and yeah. it, depends, it depends largely <clears throat> upon federal bailouts, which means my tax dollars that are going to the federal government then are going to Illinois government. Yeah, they're they're counting it, within that budget. They're counting on uh, five billion dollars of federal bailout money. Yeah, which doesn't even doesn't even dent the two hundred and some uh, billion in the red they are with their with their pensions already, right? Yeah, and you know the 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 two hundred billion dollar of unfunded pension liability. I I think that's. Um, I don't want to say it's dishonest because it's completely honest, but you have to look at that for what it is. At $200 billion of unfunded pension liability is if every person within the system, whether they've been in the system one year or been retired for 30 years, is collecting all their benefits today. So it's a little unrealistic to say that, but it is true. I mean, that is the number. Um, well, they're working on lowering it. They're working on lowering it by start, literally trying to starve people to death. I mean, yeah. it's that, that, you know, hey, this, we'll figure this out. We'll kill everybody in, in uh, nursing homes with COVID. Uh, let's make sure they get it by moving people with COVID in the nursing homes. Yeah. Uh, you know, getting rid, of the, getting rid of the fat is what they're doing in, in their minds. These people don't care about anybody. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's been a big problem in the state of Illinois, too, is um, both sides of the aisle, Republicans and Democrat governors in the past, they've made uh, these pension holidays and they've skipped pension payments. And uh, we all know um, what it's like at one point in our life or another, what it's like when you skip a credit card payment mm -hmm. and then uh, you're just paying interest and it seems like a revolving door and you can't get out of it. Right. And uh, unfortunately for you know Illinois government, it seems like um, they're comfortable doing that because they can just keep taxing the taxpayer um, and it doesn't hurt them at all. It, it, that's an, and, and that's a perfect segue into the other piece of the budget that was um, disgusting was uh, they voted uh, themselves a pay increase. Wow. With a 16 with a 16.5 percent unemployment rate right now in the state, we have legislators voting to increase their their own pay. It's almost like they're throwing it in the citizens' faces. Yes. It's almost like they yes. want the citizens to revolt, so then they can implement martial law and start taking guns and everything. I mean, it just, it just. Otherwise, it doesn't make any it, it, sense. None, none know whatsoever. Know I mean? None just, whatsoever. It's in everyone's face. Yes. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, and you guys know this just as well as anybody, the vast majority of, of legislators are, um, you know, it goes by population. So the vast majority are from Chicago, and unfortunately. The people in Chicago, um, you know, um, it doesn't matter what they say or what they do, um, as long as they have the right letter behind their name, that's who they're voting for. 
Well, you get yeah, the, the well, mayor of Chicago with the soundbite last week or a couple weeks ago about Lightfoot. Yeah. You know, she just wants to make sure she brings in people who voted to support the new world order. And I don't know if yeah. that, you know she could have been saying that loosely, but you know we all know what that kind of term means. But I mean, like like it, Pat was just saying, on its face, it's just absolutely insane. You guys were beyond strapped for cash anyway, so to make that kind of budgetary increase, long term, bro. I mean, the small businesses across the country, but especially when I say this, or, or I'm talking specifically about Illinois. This is happening all over, but the small businesses that are just gone, the the you know multitudes are that are unemployed, and the economy. Like you said, we were playing catch up already, but five, ten years down the line, you, we're all going to be playing catch up. But states like Illinois, is there is there a way to come back? Well, and and that's what's been so frustrating, especially in my district, with which is right on the border uh, of Iowa, with this whole COVID thing. Uh, again, just to reiterate, I'm not making light of of the virus at all, right. but when you have uh, somebody that's already kicking your ass economically and now you're forcing the businesses over here that are already trying to stay alive to stay shut down while I was open it's really like the nail in the coffin and yeah. you know I can't tell you how many emails and phone calls I get from small business owners you know telling me number one we can't do this much longer uh, number two we're gonna open up and you know maybe they'll put me in jail maybe not or Number three, um, you know, uh, w what should I do? You know, give me some advice. And I, I don't have any advice for him. It, it's, it's so frustrating through this whole process with the governor's executive order. Um, it really has become a dictatorship. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many emails I've got from people saying, well, why aren't you doing anything? Why aren't you doing anything? Well, the legislature is a co-equal branch of the government. And we've been completely cut out of this whole um, pandemic and how we're dealing with it in the state of Illinois. And um, even when we were back this last week for the five days we were there, we were calling on the governor to let us have some hearings while we're down there. I want to talk to the scientist that says that it's OK to herd people into Walmart but it's not okay to open up the mom and pop store yes, that, right. has, that has less than, you know, a quarter of the people in a Walmart at any given time. Um, Again, it's one know, of those things that's really right in your face. There's no rational logic for that. Walmart's way huge. They have a bunch of people in their small businesses. I mean, it's just, it just doesn't make your, any sense. And like Pat said, again, it's, it's just right in your face. Yeah. And, it, and again, it goes back to, um, again, not making light of the virus, but we are a constitutional republic and there's no clause in the First Amendment for your right to assemble in case of a virus. Um, the government's job in these situations is to educate people with, with science, with everything, and, and inform them to help them make the best decision possible. But at the end of the day, it's up to that individual to make those decisions. And who is government to sit there and say that you can't open your private business? And even more so, to, to dictate what is, quote, unquote, essential. Yeah. What's essential to me somebody else is different, you know? Um, me me feeding my kids. Me feeding my kids is pretty essential. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and Pritzker, and while Pritzker's, Prisker's over at one of his uh, multi-million dollar horse farms. If you've seen pictures of this place, oh yeah, it's it's ungodly. Uh, look, man, uh, I I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if another governor named Prisker just happened to be in prison after all of this. Yeah, I had no yeah, idea. Well, I, I didn't know idea the Prisker family goes back as far as it did. I literally am quite ignorant of Chicago. I used to live there, but uh, I, I I had no idea that family is uh, kind of one of those daily kind of dynasties. Yeah, yeah. Um... And, uh, you know, a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of money in that family. Yeah. That's, what do you, what that's do you think apparent of, by the spreads they own? My God. What are your thoughts on, I mean, people, I mean, it's happening across the country. Like Pat said, we just had some gentlemen on that just were like, they were done with it in New Jersey, uh, New Jersey, right. With their gym and everyone across the country is just making that choice to open up in defiance of technically the law. What are your thoughts on these people who, 
you probably very respectful human beings pay their taxes, but it's you know it's essential to for me to pay my bills. This is a family business. I think it might be in Illinois, the hundred year old business, the bar that just closed. Um, what are your thoughts on people who are defying the law but are choosing to uh, respect their right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness? Well, that's a very uh, another very important caveat to all this is it's not the law; it's an right. order. Um, I'm a lawmaker, and I sometimes get overruled by by the majority, and something that I vote against does become law. But I've never voted on any of these orders because they're orders; they're not law. Um, what is the difference? So, Make that distinction for our listeners. I mean, just even me, I, what's the difference? Because they're both, you know, people in New Mexico or whatever being fined $50,000 and actually even being arrested for violating an order as opposed to a law. Help me out. Yeah. So th- that I think that's a very big distinction between a democracy and a republic is um, we have proper representation through elected officials on, um, you know, on local and, and uh uh, regional and statewide basis, and the people that elected me to go in sp- to Springfield and represent them to pass law and vote against bad law that comes up, that's my job. And uh, a democracy is is pure mob rule, and that's what we're seeing here. It's one person that is um, sending out orders, not law, saying this is what you're going to do, and that's completely unconstitutional on its face. Um, so there are, I mean, there's intricacies where, um, you know, county health departments can, uh, you know, uh, do fines and things like that. But to put somebody in jail um, based on a based on an order and an unconstitutional one at that, um, you know, it, it's it's not a law. So well, that's you- that's unelected. Yeah. That's unelected bureaucrats. Yeah. Um, who have been given power that they should have never been given, number one. And number two, you know, this is this is just the way that I feel. I mean, I'm, I'm a true constitutionalist. The fact that I have to have a business license to have a, a business and, and pursue my happiness, liberty, and, and feed my family, I think that that's unconstitutional to even make me pay for a license, quite frankly. Um, I, I don't agree with. Or, or, or the, or the you yeah. know, property tax, and people have that discussion as well. Sorry, Neil, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and Pat brings up a very good point, but that's the that's the difference between freedom and liberty, is liberty is living within the law that our constitutional republic, you know, puts forth, and uh, freedom, frankly, is, is anarchy, and that's, that's why we are, um, you know, we're for liberty, um, is because it follows that constitutional republic that a, a, a group of guys that were a lot smarter than, than all of us put together crafted right. over 200 years ago and it works flawlessly if you leave it alone so what do you think i mean when these edicts come down which you know are illegal from top government or these even these police officers that are enacting these basically illegal orders or laws and i'm already hearing about you know lawyers going to be busy man class action lawsuits you know when this calms down what are you thinking about people filing lawsuit after lawsuit for these basic violations of of civil rights and constitution etc yeah, well, it's it's going to be very interesting, and and we've we've already seen it in Illinois to a certain extent with some of the circuit courts um, ruling against Pritzker in uh, some you know with with a legislator in particular. Um, the ruling was just you know for him and only applied to him only, um, but I think it's a you know it's a it sends a pretty big message, and um, we have. Um, we have a business uh, up in the northern part of my district in Savannah's Poopy's uh, Bar and Grill. Um, mm-hmm. They filed a lawsuit. Uh, I've talked to a lot of uh, pastors in my district that have uh, uh, signed on to a lawsuit. So we've seen some of the circuit courts rule in favor of um, some of these businesses and churches and what have you. And we're going to see how this plays out. And frankly, that's the way it should play out. Right, because there there's the three separate you know levels of government, and now we're in a situation where we're going to see if uh, the voters need to kick some of these judges out, or if they're gonna if they're gonna do exactly what uh, what is spelled out in our constitution. Well, and obviously there's well, a... and, and a lot of go ahead, Pat. sorry, go ahead. a lot of I was going to mention just that a lot of my liberal friends, and I do have quite a few liberal friends, 
have been eerily quiet on social media during all of this. I think of quite a few are being what we call red pilled. We can only hope, right? Yeah, I you know I I, I have a lot of liberal friends as well, and uh, frankly, I I don't have any problem with with liberals. I I, I actually um, I love talking with liberals. It's the leftists that I I take uh, mm-hmm. issue with. Um, sure, but a, a lot of my liberal friends are the same way. Um, you know, they were on board at the beginning. You know, let's listen to science. Let's you know, let's do this. Let's hug her down. And as it goes on, they they realize that, okay, um, now I'm not going to be a mouthpiece anymore, and this is starting to affect me. And, it, and it, honestly, as we've talked about, as much as people like to fix on that kind of you know extreme tribalism, right, left, racial, religion, I mean, this is affecting everybody. And you know, obviously, you know, we, we're seeing it play out, and obviously, there is that legal kind of pushback. But man, if whatever you can say, and you're you're comfortable with saying. People, I mean, suicides are through the roof, right? People are being placed more and more into these very desperate situations. Do you, I don't know how to phrase the question, but do you see a pushback getting more uh, violent, if you will? You know, people being placed in these kind of precarious, desperate situations, desperate, they have nothing to lose. You know what I mean? Like Pat was saying the other day, there's some of the most dangerous people with nothing to lose, whether you're a business owner or anything that's, that's come from this. What are your thoughts on that kind of? pushback do you see it happening yeah um i and i think frankly i think we're seeing it i I read an article here um last uh, early last week there were five states in the nation that had more suicides than covid deaths um in the month of april and um that's crazy wow we've seen uh, we've seen some of the um health experts not that you know, he's a health expert, but Dr. Phil was on here a month ago talking about this is going to, um, suicide is going to kill more people than, uh, than, than the virus. And That's this crazy. is, this is the overarching and, and uh, we're doing exactly what you guys like to do and go down a rabbit hole. But this is the <laughs> overarching problem with, with government getting too involved in things is it starts falling apart when you start taking people's liberty away. Um, and that's it. And again, it goes back to exactly what I said before. Our constitution is, is about as perfect as a document as there is out there. And if you follow it, it it's like a map. If you follow it, things work out the way they should. And it's sure. not, it's not always easy. Um, and, and it's not supposed to be. Um, but overall it, it's, it's going to work out. For, for the best. What, what well, you... we, we, we sit there and we think about mm-hmm. government. Gov- I try to tell people, I try, I, I, I try to tell people government cannot be benevolent. There is not a single stra- a strand of, of government that is benevolent. It is impossible. People need to understand that. So, that, you know, and this is case in point. And I said this just the other day. There are more, I just read a, a study, uh, uh, data, that shows there are more government employees in the state of Illinois than there are private sector workers. That is unacceptable. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, uh, you, you get into a scenario, and, and it's nothing against government workers. I mean, there's a lot of great government workers out there. Um, I'm one of them. You know, I, I'm a fireman. I, I'm, I'm, by definition, I'm a government worker. Sure. Um, but we have to remember, and government workers overall have to remember that it's the private business that pay our salaries. And that's where all the money is derived from, right? That's right. And, and, um, there's a tipping point that if, um, a lot of these, uh, public sector employees, um, you know, forget where they get paid from, it's all going to fall apart. Yeah. I, and I know you almost can't answer that question, but is that almost, I mean, the, the, the blatantness in which this is happening, it's almost by design when we start talking about things like Agenda 21, which I don't know if you're familiar with, but this plan to really, this large redistribution of wealth, c- control of literally almost everything, food production, energy, et cetera. It's almost the only thing that, can, not the only thing, but it's one of the only things that can almost explain it because none of this makes sense otherwise. Right. Yeah, you know the the food production thing is is um, getting to be a huge issue. Um, you know, 
I, Pat, I think you posted on your Facebook about one of your friends just selling hogs yeah. um, because uh, they can't get them to the processor. Yeah. Um, and, and God bless them for doing that. More that needs to happen. Absolutely. Yeah, local lockers, local butchers, everybody's starting to rev back up like that. That's right. And and maybe that's what we need to start getting back to yes. is, is cut out, you know, the big conglomerate corporation um, processors and, and starve, everything else. Starve, starve the beast, man. Starve yeah, the beast. Let, let, let's get back to, um, you know, let's get back to a little bit of the barter system. Exactly. You know? That's what I've been um, talking about, man. If they're going to, and this isn't a waving a white flag, but if they're going to set up this system of you have to have vaccines, you have to have, and I'm not even going to get into that, but if you have to do these things that we know are unconstitutional to participate in this other society pushed into mega cities, we need to create our own breakaway civilization. We're just what you said. Hey, Pat, let me, let's swap preppers for your jalapenos or, hey, there's a teacher up the street, man. Let's all, you know, get, you know, just a community that isn't even about this, dude. Yeah. And speaking of the, speaking of the vaccine, I tell you what, I think this has done more to open people's eyes to vaccines than anything because yeah. there are uh, people out there that I know that are um, huge, you know, Pro you vax. need to get vaccines, your kids need to be vaccinated. But now they're talking about, you know, we're rushing this process to try to get this vaccine and people are like, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> yeah. I'm all for vaccines, but I don't want one that's rushed. Operation right. Fast Track. That's what they're even calling it. Like, it's Fast Track. Yeah. Like, no, these things take two years. You've got to peer review this. You have to placebo At test least. it. You have to blind yeah. test it. Like, yeah, there's so yeah. much to that. Yeah, I'm not trusting. And then you got people like uh, Alan Dershowitz. No, you don't have the right not to have us come in and pl literally, literally, he says, to plunge a needle in your arm. Like, that's such, like, dickhead language. Dershowitz. Probably... And that, well, that's the thing. A Jewish guy, Dershowitz, of all people, telling me that I have to have mandatory medical procedures done on my children, which was done to the Jews in Germany during World War II. It's absurd. Yeah. He, he's, it's, it's mind-boggling that people would even be this stupid to listen to a guy like that. And the fact that he has the balls to even say it in public, it's, it's unreal, dude. It's, it's absolutely unreal. It's so polarizing that um, tens of millions more, you know, after the Epstein thing that we said when he got arrested – Jeff and I both said it's a walking dead man, and now they, millions got red pilled off of that one, and now we've got the vaccine stuff with Gates and um, you know Fauci. Uh, Operation or Agenda two two zero one that ended right yeah. before this all started. You know, it's all about, and it's just people are going, wait a minute, man, wait a yeah. minute. Nobody knew about the Tuskegee. Nobody knew about the Tuskegee syphilis experiment from nineteen thirty two to nineteen seventy two, where yeah. they deliberately gave black men. <clears throat> Uh, in America, syphilis and, and and followed their their deterioration for forty years, and that was that was uh, under the guise of vaccinating. Them. Yes. Yep. What, well, dude? And we evil. We've been saying, and this is like unprecedented, right? Like the country we're living in is completely unrecognizable to the one we saw four months ago. If you give, just give me your opinion, if you will, of how quickly we have moved into this lockstep of social distancing and you know paths on the floor for you to follow and you know people being everybody shamed for not their own safe space Jeff. yes everybody got their own i mean space. it's almost like dog training it's almost like that pavlovian type dog training but and it's happened so quickly give me your thoughts on how fast we've slipped into i mean what the you can't really call it anything other than like serious authoritarianism i mean you're in you're in illinois where pritzker's just laying down the law like he's caesar or something yeah, well, I I think this oh, this well really goes. Caesar, bro. Yes. <laughs> I think this, you know, to me, I think it really goes to show um, how quick people can be manipulated by the media, by their government, um, you know. And, and I, I on, on the flip side, I I think there is a lot of people that are waking up to this and and seeing it for for. Um, you know really is, what yeah. there is there's you know uh, again th this is an order these are orders this isn't law um you know loyal subjects obey orders uh, hmm. free men do not there you go dude that's go. a t-shirt the right there everyone... dude that is a t-shirt yeah yeah <laughs> if, 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 if everyone in every state went to work Right. Besides the ones that they can't go to factories that are closed down, like the auto auto plants and things like that. But everybody else just go to work. 
what are they going to do? They, they can't do anything. They, they have zero power then. Yeah. Yeah, well, un- unfortunately, and, and we've seen it in Illinois. I don't know about other states, but, um, you know, it, it's a trickle-down effect with the, with the control um, yeah. coming from the top, in this case the governor, you know, having control over, you know, local mayors, um, local mayors or county health departments. And those, the, the state county health departments, they control food licenses, liquor licenses, um, you name it. And but are they going to ban every food license and every liquor license if every bar and every restaurant open up? It's just they, 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 they're they outnumbered so badly that they couldn't do it. They simply couldn't do it. And the lawsuit uh, would be so massive yeah. at yeah. that point that you just you yeah. you're just and when what what person what person what mayor and what what person working in the, in the scott county iowa health department is going to want to even deal with the hell that's going to be unleashed upon them for even attempting to mess with people yeah and and that's i think that's one thing that i've been very um very happy about is even the Illinois State Police yeah. um, have said we're not enforcing this. Right. Uh, they 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 basically said without saying it that we're not enforcing it because this is unconstitutional. Good for them. And we're seeing yeah. more and yeah. more law enforcement from municipal all the way up to state police saying the same thing. And um, thank God they're still doing that. And and, and I'm so and I'm so about, I'm so heartened ahead, by Jeff. that because seriously these these edicts these orders that are coming are just illegal and that's our almost last line of defense our local sheriffs our local police you know forces that are just like no I'm not going to do it and before you ask your question yeah. Pat how much how much of this you know back in the 50s with the Interstate Commerce Act they're like oh if you don't let us put this interstate through your state you don't get X Y Z federal money how much of some of this stuff that be is being allowed by states is almost blackmail because of all of this possible federal money that these states can get yeah well we i mean we've seen the governor in the state of illinois um threatening counties that the state's attorneys have you know have come out and said we're not enforcing any of this and our businesses are free to open um we've seen the governor in in the state of illinois here threaten them without uh, with state funding saying okay well you're not getting state funding and if that isn't uh criminal on its face, um, you know, I don't know what is. And again, this is where big government needs to be realized and needs to be whittled down as much as possible. And I want to talk about, you know, that, that this has created a tinderbox that has many ways to ignite, right? And we saw how it could get ignited by a law enforcement officer, unfortunately, up in Minneapolis, uh, kneeling on the neck of, of a man who was not resisting and eventually cut off the blame to, uh, blood to his brain so long that it killed him. Yep. So th- this was this was absolutely unjust. It was it was horrific uh, to watch. I've trained law enforcement for many many years, and that's that's not what officers are supposed to do. And by and large, mass you know there are only a few uh, bad officers out there that always get the attention of the media to to fan these these uh, flames of of racism and stuff. And it's it's very unfortunate. But when I talk about you know racism, I want to talk about <clears throat> You know, checking a box on on um, you know ap- applying for a college. What race are you? Uh, what sex are you? Um, applying for a place to live, a, a job. You know, the U.S. Census, which I just got here, and and reading this, I'm appalled. And uh, look, it says under federal uh, penalty, I've got to fill it out and all this other stuff. But in in my on face value, I think that this is um, so probing and so unconstitutional that. Um, I'm, I feel like burning it right now on, on camera. You know, the, the first question is, how many people were living and staying in this house, apartment, or mobile home on April 1st, 2020? Then it goes on, were there any additional people staying here on April 1st, 2020? Now, we know when the COVID-19 thing started, all of that. You know, it's kind of ironic they're saying April 1st, whatever, uh, that you did not include in question one. Is this house, apartment, mobile home um, owned by you, someone else, this, that? Uh, what is your telephone number, of course? Uh, okay, whatever. Please provide information for each person living here. Someone uh, living there who pays rent, owns the residence, start by listing him or her as person one. Mm. Then it goes on to uh, what is person one's sex, uh, person one's age, uh, date of birth. Uh, both question eight, uh, Hispanic. Are they Hispanic? Uh, Latino, Spanish, black. Um, this is this is where we get into race, and this is where the race card gets pushed or, or the the, the – 
the propaganda that the media drives and the elitists drive of 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 separating us, separating us. Because look, if I if I own say a bunch of apartment buildings and and I get some applications, I want to look at do they have a job, how long have they had the job, what's their credit rating, and what's their past rent history. I don't give a, a rat's ass about what color they are, what religion they are, or anything. And that shouldn't even be on the document to begin with. And the time in my gym, and I'm, I'm sorry I'm ranting, but I'm mad about this. Uh, when I was running one of my, my gyms, a uh, lady walked in, and she's from the Census Bureau, and says, um, I want to know how many uh, non-whites you have working here. And I looked at her, and I go, I've got two Asians, two blacks, a Latino, and one white person who work here. And I said, you know why they work here? And she said, why? And I said, because they're the most qualified. Don't ever come back in my building again. And she looked at me like, holy shit. <laughs> um, so that's that's why I'm just disgusted with that. We need to remove race and sex and all the other bullshit. Uh, these boxes, all, all these documents, get rid of them because that's the bullshit that separated people. I I don't know what to say to that rant, Pat, other than uh, I, I totally agree. <laughs> Well, and, that, and again, that's part of the that's part of the by design, you know, separate everybody by the groups and then play each other off by the groups. Sure. And like now, yeah, just... it's 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 divide and conquer, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the that's been the mo for a long time. Well, and with all sure, the other sure. traditional divisions, now we have you know COVID, which is you know separating families. You know what I mean? Where's your mask? God damn it, get out of my house! You're not, or whatever it is, it's just and even you know the veracity of the numbers and people who are willing to fall in lockstep with all the nonsense of you know whatever them being incentivized to pump numbers up you put people on ventilators we'll give you numbers or you know we'll give you money etc it's just like and incentivizing I even, murder and, dude. well and I, people's I even read today that they're even double counting people so i mean it, that's all super i mean it's just obviously ridiculous but i don't know man yeah. i i just worry you know we if i said it earlier i will repeat it you know those who make peaceful revolution impossible make violent revolution inevitable and i just i don't want that to happen but what i'm seeing is not even just a state it's a it's a planet they've locked down they've did this to millions and millions of people whether it's small business or individuals out of work placing people in these very very desperate mindsets and situation we just alluded to the suicides i'm just worried man that people are going to there's going to be a line everyone will have a different line and it's going to get crossed this social tracing or whatever they're saying they can come into your house and take your kid and quarantine them or you i mean that those are lines that people just it's not it's bad for fucking business, dude, because it's a non-player. There's people who just will not have it, and I'm I'm worried that it might get there, but I hope it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of uh, going back to something you you, you said, Jeff, um, we literally had the the head of um, the Illinois Health Department, uh, Doctor Zike, stand up on a public forum and say that if somebody dies. Um, of whatever, and they're tested for COVID, and it's positive. They're counted as a COVID death. Deborah, yeah, what's her? That's her name. Yeah, no, Deborah Burks, one of the people on the coronavirus panel, said it right, standing right next to Trump and Dr. Fauci. She like made to make sure they had to clarify, like, yeah, if you die of whatever and you test positive, I mean, I'm, I saw, I read a story of a, a woman whose older son was in a car accident. But he tested positive, and so they counted that. And that's, again, when you look at some of the CDC numbers on who's died from heart disease and pneumonia, those numbers are down by like 3% because they're all being counted as COVID deaths. So it's yeah. absolutely insane. And what, I mean, again, no disrespect to anybody who's dealt with this, but a 99.9 yeah. .9 damn near survival rate and you shut down a planet and ruin millions of lives? Because Makes it no was sense. About a financial collapse. We it was definitely not just happen. about. Yeah, they right. piggybacked yeah. a lot on this. So, very unfortunate, man. Senator, I know uh, you wanted to uh, kind of. We couldn't keep you too long. I definitely appreciate the time, Pat. Any th closing statements, question you got for our good friend? No, no. Neil, please tell uh, our listeners how they can follow you on Twitter, Facebook, whatever, and stay in touch with you. Uh, yeah, Twitter is uh, uh, at Senator uh, Anderson. Um, Facebook is, uh, just actually my, my personal one is the best one to follow. And, um, uh, my official email is Senator Neil Anderson at gmail.com. Um, yeah, any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to reach out to me. I'm, uh, always willing to, to listen. Um, I represent people, not myself. So, uh, 
I, uh, I need to hear from the people that uh, I represent to do my job properly. And, and I like I like the shirt. I know, right? Yeah. Thanks. Well, and again, not only is he a legislator and he's helping to change lives, he is an EMT, boots on the ground, so he is actually out there Fire saving lives. All of it. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sorry, firemen. Yeah, out there saving lives. I apologize. Neil, thank you so very much, dude. You're obviously welcome back to the show anytime. Patrick, love you, my friend. Peace and so much love, everyone. Stay tuned. You know how it goes. There will always yeah. be more. Thanks, guys. See you, brother.